Anand Mahindra, the chairman of the Mahindra Group, revealed on Monday that he has invested in the space startup Agnical Cosmos, which launched the first rocket in history to use a totally 3D printed engine last week. India launched its first rocket fueled by a semi cryogenic engine on Thursday, the Agnabin Sorted, suborbital technological demonstrator, which was entirely designed and produced domestically. Agnabin is a two stage rocket with a capacity to carry up to 300 kilograms to a height of 700 kilometers. The rocket engines are powered by liquid oxygen slash kerosene. In a post on X Agnical Cosmos, a startup incubated at the IIT Madras, revealed that the Agnabin sorted vehicle works on data acquisition systems and flight computers that were 100% designed in-house. The rocket was also the first to fly, with aviation-grade jet fuel and industrial-grade liquid oxygen, the company said. Agnical Cosmos is expected to launch an orbital mission by 2025. Designed for both day and night operations, this cutting-edge system provides immediate feedback on the placement of your shot. Say goodbye to guesswork and staring at targets. You can instantly make adjustments and increase your accuracy with the Zen Smart Target System's vivid, visual display of your hits and misses. The tool gives you the ability to learn from your shots in addition to only displaying your hitting location. You can improve your shooting technique by identifying patterns and receiving individualized remedial measures using real-time data. Think of a virtual coach assisting you and pointing you in the direction of reliable targets. Don't be duped by the sophisticated features. Outdoor use is the intended use for the Zen Smart Target System. Its robust construction guarantees that it can survive the demands of outdoor exercise, while its lightweight form makes it easy to transport. It's also quite easy to set up, so you can spend more time honing your aim and less time fiddling with it. With its real-time feedback, personalized coaching and user-friendly design, it elevates your training experience and propels you towards shooting mastery. The second cadet training ship, Yard 1804, had its keel-laying ceremony on June 3, 24 at LNT Shipyard, Katapali. Rear ADM Sandeep Mehta, Assistant Controller of Warship Production and Acquisition, ACWPNA, led the event. Senior representatives from the Indian Navy and LNT, together with retired ADM GK Harish, head shipbuilding business, were present for the event. On March 7, 23rd, MOD and LNT signed a deal for the design and construction of three cadet training ships to be built in the country. Following their initial training on land, officer cadets will be trained at sea aboard these cadet training ships. Additionally, cadets from friendly foreign countries will have access to these ships' training facilities. This is yet another significant milestone in Indian Navy's pursuit towards indigenous shipbuilding and is in consonance with Government of India's vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat and Make in India initiatives. The Long-Term Integrated Perspective Plan will tip 2012-27 envisages a force level of three cadet training ships for Indian Navy. The People's Republic of Bangladesh's Department of Fisheries has placed a sizable export order with Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers Limited GRSE, for the building and supply of six patrol boats. After a competitive bidding process, GRSE was awarded the contract in July 2021 for US $1,821,798. The vessels are almost finished and will be delivered soon, making this a successful endeavor for GRSE's shipbuilding competence in the global market. The patrol boats of GRSE are outfitted with cutting-edge technologies to guarantee that they satisfy the particular requirements of the Department of Fisheries. Especially impressive is the water jet driving system, which provides better efficiency and mobility in shallow water than conventional propeller-driven boats. This characteristic is essential for Bangladesh's varied and frequently difficult maritime surroundings. An important 30-year concession agreement to manage container Terminal 2 CT2 at Dar es Salaam port has been finalized between Adani Ports and Special Economic Zone, APSES, and the Tanzania Ports Authority. This is APSES's third foray into foreign ports, indicating a strategic move outside of India. Through its subsidiary, Adani International Ports Holdings PTE LTD, APSES will manage CT2 in partnership with Abu Dhabi Ports Group and East Harbor Terminals Limited. Last year, a joint venture was formed, facilitating the acquisition of Tanzania International Container Terminal Services Limited TICTS, from Hutchison Port Holdings Limited and Harbors Investment Limited for $39.5 million. APSES's managing director, Karen Adani, outlined the company's goal of using its connections and experience to raise Dar es Salaam port to international standards. This calculated decision supports EPSES's overarching objective of becoming, by 2030, 
one of the world's foremost port operators. Israeli officials like Kabi Shoshani who is the Consul General of Israel to Midwest India, have responded to the Maldives government's recent decision to bar holders of Israeli passports from accessing the island nation by advertising other holiday spots in India, particularly the Lakshadweep Islands. In response to the ban, the Israeli embassy in India shared photos of various Indian beaches on X, emphasizing the warm welcome and hospitality Israeli tourists would receive in India. The Maldives' decision is seen by some analysts as a response to Israel's ongoing conflict with Palestine. The Maldives has historically been supportive of Palestinian statehood, and has been critical of Israel's policies towards Palestinians. The Israeli government has expressed disappointment with the ban, and has stated that it hopes to resolve the issue through diplomatic channels. Given that Israelis have historically been a major source of tourists, the prohibition is probably going to have a big effect on the Maldives' tourism sector. It may potentially worsen the situation between the Maldives and India, as well as between Israel and the Maldives. An Indian business with more than 15 years of drone technology experience, Throttle Aerospace Systems TAS, has made a name for itself as a pioneer in the field. They were the first business in India to receive approval from the Directorate General of Civil Aviation DGCA, to produce both military and recreational drones. TAS is an expert in creating, creating and implementing cutting-edge drone hardware and software. TAS has developed the Defender, an advanced anti-drone platform aimed at addressing the growing threat posed by rogue drones. The Defender is equipped with sophisticated features that allow it to track and neutralize unauthorized drones effectively. The Defender can be seamlessly integrated with any ground-based long-range detection system, enhancing its operational capabilities. It supports communication via Frequency Hopping Spread Spectrum FHSS, in the 2.4 to 2.482 GHz range, ensuring secure and reliable control. The state-run aircraft manufacturer Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL, started a critical safety upgrade on the military's cutting-edge light helicopter Drew Fleet following a series of accidents last year. The upgrade to the control system on the locally built choppers will increase their airworthiness, officials with knowledge of the situation said on Monday. The upgrade is almost complete. A persistent design flaw caused the Drew fleet to be grounded multiple aircraft last year, raising doubts about its record of safe flying. This prompted a drive to replace the defective original booster control rods in each ALH with new ones, after which the helicopter's booster control rod design was thoroughly reviewed. The development is noteworthy since the military uses over 330 twin-engine ALHs that HAL designed and manufactured. That's all from YKS team for now. If you like the information, then please do share and give a like. Thanks for watching.